Let's That's check nice. in with our friend on the free agent. JP, market. you're live. You're live. <laughs> JP, let's get back to some baseball <laughs> stuff here and talk about not only free agent starting pitchers, but specifically a couple of names that are on the trading block, at least rumored to be there, starting with Dylan Cease of the White Sox. Yes, let's get to Dylan Cease because I think after we saw the glass now move to the Dodgers, Dylan Cease is now the top arm available on the trade market. It's just not one year, it's two years. And that's why there's such interest right now in someone who has been previously a Cy Young Award finalist. Now, the one thing the White Sox could do is take this up until the trade deadline of 24 if Chris Getz and his front office team believe that Cease's value will increase. You see what he did between 22 and 23. Of course, the ERA came up, but the strikeout rate is still strong, and he is someone that you see it there, Madden Herald, 30 three starts it's a very important number the durability a crucial quality right now for Dylan Seats as I mentioned earlier on in the show the Baltimore Orioles are a top suitor for Dylan Cease one team though I'm watching carefully and Harold referenced them earlier the Mariners now you might say well why would the Mariners be involved in trying to trade for a starter they've got arguably the best depth of young starters in all of Major League Baseball but one thing that they have not been able to do yet is land the major free agent bat, in addition, of course, to, to Mitch Garver. So perhaps their strategy could be get the starting pitching in, which then allows you to move a Bryce Miller or Brian Wu for an impact bat via the trade market. And, that, and I think that is an option. You think about the Rays with Yandy Diaz and the group of bats that they've got there. Stay tuned for that two-part move potentially by the Seattle Mariners. All right. Hey. Uh, so, do you have something I, on this? Yeah, I just wanted to say, I don't like holding back on pitchers till trade deadline. Your injury risk is that if he gets injured, they're done. So get him now. So trade him. You know, you get all I can get right now, spring training, all that stuff, and you got two years. If he gets injured at any point in time, you just lost all your value. He misses a start. It could be a blister. It could be, you don't want question marks with pitchers. That's a good point. And so I would ask this as a follow-up, JP, and moving on to our next name. Uh, would it cost you more to trade for Dylan Cease or sign Jordan Montgomery on the market? Mm. And I know we're talking about different styles here, right versus left, uh, sinker baller versus a you know foreseen guy. But what what would be the move for you? It's a great question, Matt. I, I do think that with the cost control of Cease, he's a really appealing player for that reason but Montgomery has those October bona fides that we saw as the Rangers won the World Series and this is a really interesting comparison between Montgomery the October hero and Blake Snell the two-time Cy Young Award winner you see it there side by side Montgomery again has the higher ERA uh, certainly Snell you give the edge there based on his strikeout total having won the NL Cy Young Award but they're very similar in age and I think that's where you see the comparison often of course as we know Snell has the higher walk rate which to your point earlier Maddie might make you a little bit wary if you're in a smaller ballpark to where those walks could be more costly I think the team that I'm watching most carefully with Blake Snell right now the San Francisco Giants mm. their new manager Bob Melvin just had Blake Snell during his Cy Young Award season in San Diego. So that familiarity is there for Bob Melvin. With respect to Jordan Montgomery, I still think the most logical spot for him is back in Texas. We know, of course, Max Scherzer with his surgery, he's not going to be ready to begin the regular season on time. I think with the Rangers, if they lose Scherzer for a period of time and do not have Montgomery. It's going to be a tough task for them. Harold talked earlier about just how good that American League West is. It's going to be much easier for the Rangers to navigate if they have Jordan Montgomery back in the fold for 2024. Hey, and JP, beyond. you said two things, too. One, you talked about uh, Snell having Melvin, and obviously Montgomery had Bochi. You know, when it comes to free agency, we oftentimes talk about what the club wants. The player's in control. So that, at the end of the day, he might say, hey, I'm comfortable knowing how Melvin handles me, the relationship I have, I'm going there. Or he may say whatever, but 
And in Montgomery's case, same thing with Bochi. But I think sometimes we forget at the end of the day, the player's saying, hold it, this is, I'm controlling the market, not you controlling me, especially when you got a lot of suitors. That's a great point. And remember this on Blake Snell quickly. Of course, he's from the Seattle area originally. So West Coast, he's already pitched now in the NL West. So there may be a bit of continuity there to where if he goes to the Giants, it's a good fit for him personally. Again, being home on the West Coast. Hey, quickly, JP, uh, I, there's a lot of names here, but the hitters free agent market still has some really fascinating names on it. Highlighted, of course, by Cody Bellinger, Reese Hoskins, uh, some other names. Let's go through that group. Sure, but we talked earlier about Bellinger and how I believe the pieces are on the board to potentially send him back to the north side of Chicago, but you make a great point. It's not just Bellinger, and, and there is a pretty big gap, Matt, between what Bellinger, we believe, has been asking for and then the largely shorter-term deals that could be out there for the likes of Justin Turner or J.D. Martinez. This is the year, I believe, where if you're comfortable going for the higher AAV on a shorter term deal for someone like Turner or Jorge Soler or J.D. Martinez or Reese Hoskins, if you compare that to what Bellinger may get on the longer term deal, you've got a chance to look really, really smart by the time spring training begins. So here's a, a sampling of all the names out there. Adam Duvall, I know his name was mentioned earlier. That's a great name to keep in mind. Someone who I think defends really well, a versatile outfitter who brings power. Whit Merrifield, I love versatility, what he's able to do. And Tim Anderson, we talked about him at different times during the course of, of the show. He was on as a guest earlier on on Hot Stove. I think Tim Anderson, of course, he played second base for Mark DeRosa on Team USA. Whether it's potentially the Seattle Mariners or somewhere else, there's enough teams that need a second baseman to where I'm not sure how many teams would give him the everyday shortstop job right now, but at second base, I see a really good fit for him, especially at a time where you have some other trade possibilities in the middle of the diamond still out there like the Twins, Jorge Polanco, and the Orioles, Jorge Mateo. There is uh, a player out there to fit any need. Power hitting catchers are still out there. There are switch hitters that are still out there. JP Morosi with us on our first show of 2024. Thank you. 